This is a production of Cornell University. When Susan and Tom Palamaki started Lucas Greenhouses in 2005, they didn't want to be tied to routine spray schedules. So they hired Debbie Palumbo Sanders to help them find a better, gentler way to cope with pests. We caught up with Susan and Debbie at the 2012 Cornell Floriculture Field Day after they accepted their Excellence in IPM Award from the New York State IPM Program. My husband, Tom, and I uh, purchased the greenhouse and started to read all the um, requirements for pesticide application. My husband has a degree from Cornell in agriculture, and we weren't real familiar with the pesticide application. started reading it all and really didn't want to have to do that, and we thought there had to be a better way and there had to be a safer way. So we found... Deb Palumbo Sanders, who happens also to be our neighbor, <laughs> go figure, um, lived right down the street from us, and we hired her, and I'll let Deb take it from there. Well, I think the most important aspect to IPM is that as owners, Tom and Susan were totally open to doing it a better way because it was the right thing to do. Not because it would garner some publicity or because it was the new buzzword of the decade, but because it truly was the right thing to do, not only for themselves, their workers, but for their customers coming in. And because we're both a grower and a retail operation under one roof, our customers are walking right through the production area. And when the little kids come in and want to pick the cherry tomatoes off the tomato plants, we have no qualms about it. And we just smile and they're happy and that makes us feel a lot better. If you take a traditional approach to greenhouse pest management, you go in on a regular basis and you just keep spraying. And in our operation, I will go and scout the whole area and if there's only 10 square feet with an aphid problem, then that's what you would spray would be the 10 square feet. But we stepped back even further in that we now know what we're probably going to encounter from our suppliers, to be honest, and also just from things blowing in. And so that's where the biologicals come in. We kind of get one step ahead of our problems. We get the preventative, the biocontrols that will take care of our aphids or our thrips, our spider mites, and we're ready for them when they arrive so they don't build up the population and we don't have to. In IPM, yes, you might have a little bit of an explosion of a population in a corner. We just treat the corner. We don't go through, we don't wipe out the whole greenhouse in a spray program. We're very, very conservative in what we apply. And the biggest thing with IPM is that it's a group effort. Uh, when we first were introduced to the whole concept of biologicals into our IPM program, we were introduced to a wonderful grower over in Buffalo at Michler's, uh, Mark Yaden, and he just said, call me up. If, if you have questions, just let me know. I'll, I'll gladly help you through it. And I did, and I called with very simple questions. Sometimes I was almost embarrassed because I, I felt I was so naive in it, and Mark would just say, no, that's right, just do it. And we did, and I have to say along the way, we stumbled a lot, we got very discouraged, but we just kept going ahead. And if it wasn't for the IPM staff, that really helped guide us through a lot of the problems we encountered because what's IPM, you have to know what you're trying to control. They helped us with the diagnosis and understanding the life cycle of both the diseases and the insects. And together, it was just a wonderful experience. great because you know what our customers are more knowledgeable we have these wonderful posters that we put together to explain to them what IPM is and what we're doing and when they see brand on their plants and what it means and every single uh, person that stands there and reads it we know we've just helped further the education of IPM and and expanding it so that they know there are other options for them in their home garden as well as um, growers and they can be more discerning about what they purchase. It's also been great because our employees all know now. Deb scouts, but when we're full in May, we can't rely just on Deb. We try to, t we teach, we teach them all that you all have to be looking, you all have to be noticing what's on that plant and if it looks different, what to do. So. 
When we explain it to uh, just a home gardener, home owner, who really has no biology, yes, you can see the, the light going, oh, I mean, and, and it helps too. I mean, the little spots on your leaves of your kale that you're buying, it's okay. Yeah, and that's really what it's all about. If, if there's a blemish or if there, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not a perfect green, the customer now goes, but it hasn't been sprayed with anything that's going to be toxic to me yeah. or my kid. You know, we have little kids and they do the tasting tour through the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. They taste the tomatoes, they taste the, the stevia, they taste the um, strawberries, and they can go through and eat all that stuff because it's not mm -hmm. been treated. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.